I'm always looking for inspiration for new, cool, unique speakers. It was during this time that I came across these clip speakers that are designed for a movie theater. These ones were really intriguing to me because they were designed to be hidden behind a screen, meaning that even though they use this large 15 inch woofer in a two way design, they're actually designed to be very skinny. They're only 12 inches deep. There is a problem with them though. They're about $3,000 each. That means if you want to do your whole front sound stage, that's about $9,000 for just three speakers. Now, I think not only can I beat the price of the clip speakers, but I can make them even better than the clip speakers. As fate would have it, Eminence contacted me at the exact time I was looking at designing these speakers. And guess what? They also wanted to have a home theater speaker designed. Since we were all on board, we just had to pick out some drivers. And we first chose the woofer. This we chose the Omega Pro 2KW. It's a new woofer by Eminence that was just relief. Now this woofer can actually take up to 2000 watts. It fits in the exact same box as Klipsch and can even tune to the same 50 Hertz. Now we don't need that amount of wattage because these are gonna be very sensitive speakers, meaning we're not going to need much power. In fact, we could just power this with just a typical surround sound receiver to be able to just drive these to reference level and beyond. And although we don't need that amount of power, it's always nice to have that on tap. Not to mention, if you're gonna be using this in a much larger venue, it should be possible. Now, there is a problem that a lot of people don't think about when they try to pick out a woofer, and that's what type of port you're going to be using and where you're going to be placing that port. The reason being, when you're making really thin speakers like these, your port can't extend too far into the cabinet. Because if it does, it's actually going to interfere with how the port acts. Thankfully, the simulation showed that this would work with this woofer. So now that we had the low end figured out, I just had to figure out what we're gonna do for the high end. One of the things that a lot of people don't think about when they're designing and building speakers is that what frequency you wanna cross it over at. When you're crossing over with a larger woofer, you need to cross over sooner or at a much lower frequency. If you don't do that, you're going to have gaps in the frequency response. That can happen both on axis and even off axis, depending on how you cross it over. Now, Clips cross there is about 900 hertz. This is about max that you can cross over with most compression drivers. However, Eminence just released their new TechStream driver that can actually cross over as low as 700 hertz. And boy, does that make a world of difference. Of course, we can only cross over that low if we can get a horn that can also load down that low. Thankfully, Eminence also had one specifically designed for this driver. Now it's time to design the enclosure. I wanted to keep the same depth as the clips of 12 inches. This is tricky as I have to take into the account the ports, the rear of the driver, and even the bracing. And after quite a bit of work, I was able to make it all work out. One of the things I really appreciate what the Klipsch did was the compression driver was not in the box, it was exposed. I like that, but I want to try to improve on that design. So I did this by angling the signs up towards the top. Now by doing this, I cut down on the diffraction points, which can give a much smoother high-end response. Not to mention, I just think it looks cool. I also want to make the box very inert, and I did this by putting a lot of bracing in there. That should get rid of the resonances in there and that should help the speaker sound as best as it possibly can. Now, by adding a lot of bracing in there, I also varied the heights that can break up those standing waves. Since I designed everything in SketchUp, I was able to send those files over to the CNC and have it do most of the work for me. Now everything appears to be cutting right, so I got this piece of scrap wood, and what I'm gonna do is wanna make sure that this is actually cutting to the right dimensions by just sliding this in. If it doesn't fit, then I know that I need to stop the machine and resize this cut. But let's just see what it looks like. What I like to do is cut out the wave guide in the woofer hole just to make sure that these are going to fit. Yeah, this actually doesn't fit. So that's okay. I'll go ahead and make another cut of this before I cut everything else out and that should fit.
Now the way I made this, all the pieces are actually just gonna fit right in these slots, but while I'm gluing this all together, I don't want anything to move on me, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw a couple brad nails in. Just wanna make sure, I'm not gonna be able to see these slots afterwards, so I'm just gonna make sure to kind of mark these down the center, it doesn't have to be perfect. But near the center, that way, when I am nailing it, I don't miss it. I'm gonna need to get a pencil. I mean, that's tight. That's not going anywhere. I might glue it anyway just to glue it, but uh, probably not necessary. This is one of those very, very tight fitting things, but I probably will run some cock around it just to be safe. <laughs> One good thing that I love about this paint is it does a really good job of hiding the nail holes and it doesn't fill the nail holes by any means but because it's so textured you just don't really notice them. And when you're designing a crossover there's a lot of things that you need to take into account such as distortion, crossover point, and even waterfall graphs. All of these need measurements to find the best crossover point. For this, I used the Omni mic from Dayton Audio. What I found out is that the Techstream absolutely had no issues crossing over in the 7 Hz range. Now, I also checked out this waterfall graph, and this is the best waterfall graph I've ever seen on a compression driver, and it absolutely had no issues crossing over in the 700 Hz range. If you want to learn a little bit more about the waterfall graph and this particular driver, check out the video I linked up above. Now, since this didn't have any of those issues, I wanted the text stream to be able to do as much of the work as possible. So I crossed it over right around 750 hertz. Now, once I have these finished, the first thing I want to do is listen to some music. So I played some for me and my wife. It was amazing. I wish you could have seen her face. I wish I would have recorded it. She was awestruck. Her mouth had dropped open and she looked at me and said, these are the cleanest and clearest speakers I have ever heard. Now keep in mind, I build a lot of speakers, and also I'm playing music that she's heard multiple times, hundreds of times, and yet she was hearing things that she had never heard before in the songs that she listens to a lot. And that really does tell you a lot about this particular driver. Some compression drivers are known for their honkiness or their nasally sound. This didn't have any of that. It was just a crystal clear sound. Now, of course, I also wanted to listen to this in my theater and I wanted to listen to some movies. So I popped some in and I unplugged the center channel speaker. And I'm really glad I did because these are significantly cleaner sounding and sound better than any of the center speakers that I've designed to date. Now, one of the questions I always get asked is which of my theater speakers are my favorite? Well, I'm gonna stop you right there. I'm gonna tell you to go ahead and check the link below. 
it's going to show you which of the speakers I like for whatever application that you might be using them for. However, if you're talking about theater right now, this is absolutely number one on my list. It's not even close. I understand that some of you might want to build these. Don't worry, I'm gonna put the build plans down below in the description as well. I wanna make sure that these are available to you so that you can actually build these and experience these for yourself. I hope that you enjoyed this video and if you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Please share it with your friends and you know, make sure to comment down below if you have any questions, concerns, anything. I like to hear from you guys and I try to answer those when I can. All right guys, this is Toyd's DIY Audio and I'm out.